Biomes are geographic regions of the world that share similar climate and similar plant and animal communities. In this video series, I want to explore the nine terrestrial biomes you need to know for AP Environmental Science. What I want you to be able to do by the time we're done with the first unit is imagine what it's like to be inside all of these biomes. If I ask you to describe a rainforest, I want you to be able to close your eyes and imagine. Here are the dominant plant communities I'm seeing. Here are the sorts of animals and their adaptations. And here is the climate of this region. As a note, before we begin, a lot of the animals and plants that I'm going to be showing you as being part of each biome, um, I'm not paying attention to any geographic boundaries. So when I'm talking about rainforests, I might show you clips from the Amazon, or I might show you clips from Costa Rica, or I might send you some clips from tropical Africa. Really, it's whatever. My goal, again, is to get you to imagine what each ecosystem looks like. The tropical rainforest is a warm and rainy biome that is situated right along the equator. In the tropical rainforest, you are going to find that the dominant plant species are extremely tall trees. And those trees end up providing habitat to other plants. There are ferns and orchids and vines that live on those trees. As far as animal communities, you are going to find quite a bit of tree-dwelling mammals, of course, because there's a whole bunch of trees. But you're also going to find a whole bunch of amphibians, especially frogs. You're going to find some ground predators like jaguars, and you might find some larger herbivorous mammals as well. When you are thinking of the savanna, realistically, you can just imagine the Lion King and you're going to get pretty close. But let's get a little bit more specific. The savanna's climate really has two seasons. They have a very rainy season and a very dry season. Because you are still relatively close to the equator, the temperature throughout the year is more or less the same, but it's a very wet season and a very dry season which creates some really interesting adaptations for most of the animals. A lot of the animals who live in the savanna end up migrating away during the dry season. So a lot of the large herbivorous mammals that live in the savanna will migrate away during the dry season. Plant communities in a savanna really are just grasses and a few dispersed trees. In fact, that's actually the definition of a savanna, an area that is predominantly grasses with a few dispersed trees. Taiga, or the boreal forest, is the largest biome on Earth by how much area it actually takes up. The climate in the taiga realistically has maybe two seasons. There is the inhospitably cold and the slightly more hospitable cold. So it does get above freezing during the summer for a little bit, but for the most part, I think of the taiga as having two seasons, frozen and not as frozen. The defining plant community of the boreal forest are going to be 
very tall evergreen trees. And as far as animals, uh, especially during the summer, you're going to find quite a few migratory birds, some small rodents, deer, moose, and of course our favorite bears. I'd now like to welcome you to what I consider my home base. This is Labaw Woods in Chicago, Illinois. It's part of the deciduous forest biome, and it's where I practice my ecological stewardship as a volunteer steward with the Forest Preserve District here, and I absolutely love this forest. So let's explore what makes a deciduous forest a deciduous forest. The temperate deciduous forest has four seasons in that there is a cold winter and a warm summer and in between there you get a spring and a fall that tends to be where the majority of rain ends up falling. It warms up quite substantially during the summer. The dominant plant community inside a deciduous forest are going to be deciduous trees or trees that will lose their leaves in order to conserve water during the cold winters. The animals here tend to be migratory birds, but year-round you get a few deers, stuff like raccoons that are super generalists. Let us begin our exploration of grasslands here at Badlands National Park. This park is situated somewhere near the western side of South Dakota, and it is a beautiful example of a remnant grassland. Here, there are huge flowing fields full of grasses, wildflowers, and a couple of shrubs. You can see bison, large herbivorous mammals that are very typical of large grasslands just like this. Grassland is an ecosystem dominated by, and catch this, grass. A grassland's climate actually tends to be somewhat similar to a deciduous forest, and grasslands and deciduous forests are very commonly found along the same lines of latitude. However, um, grasslands do get less rain than deciduous forests, so that is one defining characteristic. Other than that, it's a grassland. The defining plant community is grasses, um, a few shrubs and wildflowers as well, but definitely the dominant plant species is grasses. As far as animals, this is where you get your large herbivorous mammal. What's important to note about grasslands is that they are maintained by fire, especially during dry months. Uh, fire start and they stop grasslands from succeeding into forests or some sort of other ecosystem. The tundra, or more specifically the alpine tundra, because this ecosystem is here because of its elevation, not so much because of its latitude. Here at Mount Hood in Oregon, we see that even though I am recording this in the middle of July, there is snow. Obviously, it is quite a bit cooler here. The tundra is the coldest biome where it is below freezing for most of the year. So this is another one of those ecosystems where you are gonna find realistically two seasons inhospitably frozen and slightly more hospitably but still mostly frozen. These are the farthest north and south biomes in the world but the tundra can also be found high in elevation on top of really tall mountains. The dominant plant community in a tundra really tends to be small low-lying um, flowers, mosses, and lichens. As far as animals, 
things that are blubbery, things that are furry, things that migrate, and things that change color. Um, a handful of like foxes and stuff that live super far north will change fur color from white to sort of brownish and then back to white for the winter. It's quite interesting, actually. This is the whole rainforest in Olympic National Park. It's a very magical place with mosses and ferns in the understory and these massive trees that make up the canopy. The temperate rainforest is a rainforest that is found way away from the equator. This is commonly an area that has a similar temperature curve to that of a deciduous forest but gets significantly more rain but it is nonetheless still a rainforest and as you would expect the dominant plant community is going to be very tall trees however in uh, temperate rainforest you tend to get significantly more ferns and mosses on the forest floor than you would in an actual tropical rainforest as far as animals you are going to get a bunch of small mammals a few large mammals slugs and a bunch of insects. The chaparral is a relatively geographically restricted biome, making it a very interesting and unique place to visit and explore. Here in sunny Angeles Forest, we get to see a brilliant example of a chaparral. The chaparral is a biome that gets less rain than forests, but more rain than deserts, and you end up with a plant community that appears to be a weird hybrid of both the most rain-tolerant desert plants and the most drought-tolerant grassland plants, but nonetheless the plants in the chaparral are fire-tolerant. Because of really dry and hot conditions during the summer, lightning storms sparked quite a few fires. As far as animals, you're going to find small burying animals and things that hunt the small burying animals. Roswell, New Mexico is situated in the Chihuahuan Desert in North America, and I made the mistake of making these in July, and it is hot. The desert is the driest of all the biomes, and it is where you find plants that have the thick waxy leaves or the thick waxy stems to store water. As far as animals go, you are going to find a lot of animals that are nocturnal. This is because the daytime and nighttime temperatures in a desert are wildly different. During the daytime, it's very hot. During the night, not so much. So a lot of animals are adapted to exploring and looking for food at night. And with the desert, I end my American biome road trip. <laughs>